Hi, my name is Umair Dar, and I am the producer and founder of A for Lif. Um, so I'm here uh, starting a new series where I'm going to go into a bit of detail and depth, showing you how I'd go about mixing and sometimes mastering um, audio here, songs and projects. Um, the reason I want to share this with you is because my approach is a little different and um, I'm lucky to have access to some really good analog outboard gear here that I use to mix in a hybrid fashion using both the best of the plugins and all the technology available through the DAW logic in my case, um, which I use, and also the analog warmth and flavor of something like going through a summing console instead of logic doing, um, you know, all the uh, audio calculations and integration to make it all fit into one, two track from, you know, sometimes 50 to 100 tracks per song. That's happening through actual voltages um, in the analog domain in my rig here. Um, so there's some interesting quirks about that, which, you know, as we go through some of this series, we'll, uh, I'll get to show you bits of. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, and please drop your questions, comments, feedback in the box below and don't don't forget to like subscribe share and if there's any tracks that i've produced or mixed that um, you want to see a breakdown on please share that in the comments Yeah. And the mix is the same that we did on the last one. Yeah. Nice. They're very similar, so honestly. Yeah, so we can adjust. Dynamic You have to put the input monitoring on. Okay, so. Um, and. The mute. Stand over. Hmm. Uh, this. And. Let's see. So we're just routing the audio out from the computer from the DAW from Logic um, into my Neve summing console. So we've got a stem mix and mastering set up here where I can bring in different stereo tracks to um, 
to this seven account. You know, the instruments on this channel. I put his vocals on this one. This is uh, basically a saturation um, you know, control. So in the old school new consoles, you had different kinds of saturation to the transformers. So the red silk, I really love. Alright, so on the instrument bus, I'm going to patch in my Shadow Hills bus compressor. Um, well, it's a stereo compressor, and I like using it on the instrument bus, and from that I'm going into the character, uh, which is by Alicia, and it's a stereo harmonic saturator. So I like going from compressor into the saturator, and the saturator you can use it in mid-side mode, therefore I can... Um, process the middle with the kick and snare differently to the sides with the cymbals. So let's see how this stuff sounds with and without um, the processing. So we're doing about half. Uh, dB of gain reduction on the compressor and now let's see what happens going into character just gonna play around with the settings here again it's in mid side mode so I'm just trying to push and focus the central image a bit with the kick and snare as I said and anything else that's mono in the image just playing with the sides Using saturation really helps um, thicken up the sound, so, you know, it's subtle, but it all adds up. Now let's bring the vocals back up, and I'm going to patch in my API EQs, 550Bs on the vocals. So here I'm going to pull out a bit of boxy 500 range about 2 dB out of that um, I'm gonna try let's see. try opening up the air 20k come back to the vocals to adjust the mid-range a bit but I think this is, this is sounding good for now Vertigo Sound um, DSM2 through which I've got my bus compressor inserted. That's the Serpent, which is a SSO style bus compressor. So let's start adjusting that. Usually I side chain out um, a bunch of the low end from the bus compressor so that we don't lose that um, bottom end punch. Just the uh, pulp textiles, EQs here on the mix bus. 
so on the mix bus my my chain is usually going first into the you know dual mono set of uh, warm audio um, EQs the Pultec tones so it gives you a nice round bottom end for a tube processors so it has a nice one and usually I try around 30 or 60 Hertz for a 3 or 4 dB boost but I'm gonna try a couple of different frequencies I think 60 is sounding nice here and these EQs have an interesting uh, way of functioning there's a boost and a cut but they have different curves so it's two band, a low end, high end, but for both bands you also get a cut as well as a boost so you can work them simultaneously uh, and shape your entire kind of sound. Staying the high end, more high mids are 5k, bringing out the, the vocals a bit without Alright, so from uh, the EQP, it's going into my bus compressor. So I usually don't like to do more than maximum 3-4 dB of compression on the mix bus and the attack and release settings I usually play with depending on the song here I'm gonna try a few different attack settings ratio I usually go for 4 or 6 to 1 um, and like I said I like side chaining out low end but this compressor also has uh, two different kinds of slopes on the side chain I like the boost slope it kind of brings out the uh, punchy mid-range, the snares and vocals. So from the compressor, um, the next thing it goes into is the EQ section, which is inserted on the VSM. I've got it set it up in mid-side mode with my Mag EQ4, Mag String EQ. The great thing about the EQ4 is this airband. So I'm just opening up 40k on both the mids and the sides, which really helps open up the entire mixes. It also has um, multiple bands in the mid-range and, and sub and low end to help shape the sound. I like pushing 650 on the sides. It helps give width to my mixes. If you notice that, uh, everything has just become much bigger and wider. So this is a nice little trick to bring in a size and dimension and depth at the final stage of the mix. Out and width. As you can hear, it's, it's a pretty notice noticeable difference. So here's the fun part. I mean, this mix that light VSM2. I love this thing and using it I can add saturation on third harmonics and in second order harmonics. So right now I'm working with the third order harmonics adding kind of a limiting effect on the entire track which really helps thicken things up and even out the entire um, mix and master. 
and the other cool thing is with this you can apply these harmonics just to the middle of the image or to the stereo image or just to the size so second order harmonics i try building my low end up from that so i'm i've got it in, in the middle only and uh, just affecting the lows It's all about gain staging um, when you're working like this in hybrid, you know, analog and digital because every processor you know, has a different sweet spot and you have to adjust the input and output on uh, every stage to make sure the next stage is being fed at the right level essentially. So this is going to work on making the vocals a little bit less um, harsh in those upper mids. Soothe 2 is an incredible plugin to do exactly that, so I'm just going to adjust the settings here. it on uh, as high quality setting as possible there's uh, a lot of processing going on Rusty compressor, Fab Filter. By the way, Fab Filter makes the best mixing plugins in the box, I feel. So, yeah. Just gonna get even more, try and get even more thickness and cut on the vocals. low end and extra high end just want to thicken up the mid range so on this plugin it's really easy to side chain out the frequencies that you don't want to compress
just fine tuning the EQ here. There's some boost around 1k almost. the compressor here on the nectar so as you can see there's yeah, a stacked compression happening here there's the LA2A, there's the nectar, there's the C2 and then there's the hardware compressor compression happening as well so I like using compression in that way um, to take things up, bring things more forward Tuning some settings here. I'm gonna instead of pushing the air on the vocals, I am going to try something else. I'm still finding them a little bit harsh. Making the vocals a bit more focused with the EQ, basically. They were sounding a little bit spread out, top end. Interesting, trying different uh, attack in the least times, mostly attack times the bus compressor. There's also convenient dry wet knob in here so you can push the compressor more and blend in your dry signal. So this is called parallel compression. Very very useful in increasing the average level of your song without smashing it completely. but I usually like the band pass setting on Shadow Hills if I'm compressing the whole track through it. It just grabs the middle range and um, takes that 